research that's gone into how ancient cultures and tribal cultures existed, there's a lot of uh, ideas out there that bartering was a part of life, part of everyday life before money existed. But what a lot of the research is showing is that bartering was never really a part of society. In fact, what we started out as is gifting, gifting societies, gifting. People valued the flow, people valued the people who are giving more, not the accumulation that we've turned to um, over the last little while that's really destroying a lot of the planet. And the other th interesting thing is that a lot of tribal and Aboriginal cultures, they didn't, don't actually have two different words for giving and receiving. They're actually the same word, giving and receiving. Because they view it as when you're giving a gift, you're not giving something away, you're giving it to someone in your community and you're generating gratitude. And through that gratitude, you are buying the best security. It's the security for the future, really. It's people that are going to look out for you and people who are going to give back to you and to other members of the community because they feel grateful. When you feel grateful, that's what you desire to do. And it's unfortunate, I find, in our society that the only, when we think of gifting, the two things that probably come up are birthdays and Christmas, which are nice explorations into the idea, but it's really not getting at what gifting is in its true essence. You know, we've, it's just become a last minute purchase, oh, here's a DVD, here's a gift certificate, because it's that obligation. Gifting has become an obligation, even in the small instances that we have where we get the opportunity to gift. So, gifting should be coming out of a place where we desire to see gratitude in others. So we feel gratitude, we desire to give to others so that they can feel gratitude. So there's been some interesting ways that I've been trying to incorporate this into my life and Brent has as well. So we're gonna share some stories with you guys. And one thing that I've learned recently that's really powerful is that so much of what we have in our society, the economy, the money, the way we operate and interact with each other, they just operate out of agreements that we make with each other. It's all just made up, and it's all just agreements. And the power of those agreements comes from the stories that we tell each other about our experiences and about how life works. So when we're up here and telling our story about it, I'm guessing that it's gonna be a lot more meaningful, and they are a lot more meaningful than random statistics or facts that people spiel off about some study that somebody did. It makes a lot more sense and means a lot more to you when it's somebody that you personally know that has done it. So, and that's something that I've been really struggling with is sharing my experiences and my story because I feel like there's so much of people telling me the way that things are and yet my experiences are totally different from that. And I think it's my job to start talking about those experiences so that people can have that other side of it because right now it's pretty one-sided in terms of what we're getting told. So, I don't know, if Brent, do you want to jump in here maybe? Pass it off to Brent. Hello, everyone. Hello. Uh, I'm part of the Occupy movement for day 107 now. Uh, I'd like to thank Matt and Evolver for, first of all, giving me the first place that I ever got up and spoke. That was at the sport at the area. Uh, Matt has been an excellent and amazing friend. He's contributed greatly to the occupation, even though he wasn't there in body. As much as he would like to be, he did everything in his power to make uh, our place just a special, harmonious place that we really got to enjoy. And um, I, myself, went through an evolution of mind because my whole life I was a giver, a giver, a giver, a giver. I thought it was very important to give as much as I could. And when I went to the occupation, I put myself into a position of having to receive, which I've never done before. And it's very awkward, and I found that a lot of our society has a very large problem with receiving. Interesting. And we all like to give. But we don't like, we want to give to things that we think are going to do something. 
So I guess that was why we developed such a fabulous community of people that wanted to give. The people that we had for supporters mostly, single moms, low-income families, retired people, because they don't have a voice that exists in this system. They are not given the opportunity to deliver their message. And it's people like you guys that are giving us a chance to get up here and discuss what's important in life. And St. Francis said it best, it is truly in giving that we receive because every time that I'm in an, oppor in an opportunity to give, I have to try and give as much knowledge that I've learned from what I've taken from every experience that I've been in in this receiving role. I, I want to tell you a quick story. When I was down at the plaza, this one especially touched my heart. There was so many, I could go on for hours. But uh, it was about 7.30 in the morning and it was dark and it was chilly and I was kind of bouncing around trying to stay warm. And this gentleman walked up in the lights and he said, how you doing? I said, good. And I looked to, to be maybe homeless or struggling anyways, didn't, didn't have much money, wasn't dressed overly well. And he, uh, he said, I, I, I'm really, really proud of what you guys are doing. I can't believe something like this is going on in Calgary. And I said, uh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. He said, I'd like to give you something. He said, but I don't have much, I, I'm homeless. He said, but can I give you what I have? And I said, absolutely. He reached into his pocket, he pulled out a check, and uh, he pulled out a pen and signed it very neatly, and uh, he folded it and he handed it to me. And uh, I said, what's your name? He said, Marvin. I said, thank you, Marvin. I gave him a hug and Marvin said, thank you very much. I appreciate what you guys are doing. You can do it. Then he walked off into the morning. I stood there. I, I felt touched so many times down there. But uh, in the, the lights of the street, I opened up the check and looked at it. It was for $6.21. That's what giving is. Thank you. A little more about the aspect of receiving because Brent's right you know it's so difficult for us to receive and receive openly it doesn't have to be a gift um, in the physical sense that we think of but it can also be as a compliment you know how quick are we oh this thing you know that's you know I dug it up out of the trash like, why are you complimenting me and you kind of brush it off you know so learning to openly receive gifts that people give you compliments things that you need is really important because if you try to downplay that gift or feel like, oh, I don't have anything for you, or you know, feel bad, then you're taking away the essence of the gift. The gift is not supposed to make you feel bad or uh, you know, guilty or obligated. It's you're supposed to feel gratitude from it. So that's you know, try to remember that if somebody's giving you a gift, really openly, fully receive it. Be open to receiving it, and. The giving and the receiving are also directly reflected, and if you are unable to receive, then you probably have issues gifting as well. When you gift, are you looking for that return? Are you giving it and sort of giving it around the corner, not expecting anything to come back? Um, I took a web conference with Charles Eisenstein, who I've talked about before, uh, with his Sacred Economics, and there were a couple of the web seminars. He'd always pose a question at the beginning. I wasn't sure if I was going to do this just because I want you guys kind of listening, but in the background of your mind, and then we'll open it up to anybody if they want to share stories. I want you to try to think of a story of something that happened to you or somebody that you know that taught you what true gratitude really meant and what that really felt like. An experience that really taught you what gratitude and generosity was. And another question is a time where you experienced a loss and through that loss found out what true wealth really was. And one of the responses that somebody had to that was that he was over in India and he took a bus ride and the bus driver was trying to rip him off by overcharging him a little bit. And he knew the culture and he knew how much the bus rides was supposed to charge. So 
after a little bit of an argument, the guy just paid him what he thought the bus fare was worth. And then after he got back to the States, after he got back home, he felt really bad because he figured this guy probably could have used the money a little bit more than him. So he made the decision, he was going to go back again, he made the decision that he would track him down and give him the hundred dollars that he was trying to overcharge him. Well, the next day after making this decision of returning the hundred dollars, he was out buying a used vehicle and the list price on it was eighteen hundred dollars. But, and he was fully willing to pay that amount, $1,800, but for some reason, the guy selling the vehicle insisted that he only pay $1,700. Keep the $100, $1,700. He was fully willing to pay the $1,800. So he found this kind of interesting. So then he started up what he called the $100 experiment, where he started collecting money for charity. And he asked his friends to donate $100 if they felt compelled to, and then see how that came back to them in their life. And he had many instances of people having more money coming back to them. People writing them checks for no reason. Uh, you know, people giving gifts of money back to them. And so, for him, that really showed how giving can amp it up the return. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be from that person. So, our house, uh, Eden's Cove, we've got a little healing sanctuary business going on there. And we have started implementing a gifting model. So we are gifting our services, our float, and if, and only if you feel gratitude from the gift, are you invited to keep the flow going by returning however you feel called to return. And what we're hoping to do with this is open up an avenue for people to really explore the gifts that they might not necessarily be aware that they have or even have the opportunity to give back. So it doesn't always have to be money, although that's what a lot of people feel called to do and that helps because there are expenses, but it could also be services or time. You know, maybe you give a great foot massage, maybe you know how to cook meals and if you desire to give to us, that's amazing, and we'll receive those gifts. If you want to come over and cook us dinner, be from your gratitude that you feel excellent. If we don't need the gift that you're offering, we'll still gratefully accept it, but we're going to pass it on. So we're going to start putting up a board where if you have a service that you offer and you've enjoyed your hour float, for example, then you can put your name. Here's a one hour um, you know, computer fix session my phone number and then if somebody comes in and they need that it's theirs so what we're trying to do with this is really build community that's what it's all about is building community and a community that has a space for people to give the gifts that we really don't have the opportunity to give back in today's world because we're so driven to try to produce money and most times our gifts don't produce money in our lives but if it produces community, I mean, everybody feels the whole financial thing going on. You know, it's getting harder and harder to meet all of our needs with our money. We have to work more and more. So we're going to start to see services that people pay for come back into the public realm. Neighbors might start looking after their uh, other neighbors' kids instead of daycare because people can't afford daycare. Um, I saw a girl walking five dogs. That's probably going to start getting back into the uh, public realm. So if you start living from the gift and gifting to people and keeping the flow going, valuing the flow over the accumulation, then it opens up you to the gift and to receiving and builds community. It builds gratitude. It creates bonds and relationships with people that last through anything. So the security that people feel with a large bank account is really just an illusion. I'm sure everybody here realizes that, you know, all it takes is an instant and it's gone, and then what? So when you live from the gift and when you build the community and the relationships, then you have those bonds, you have people that are gonna look out for you and help each other. You know, in rural towns, if the barn blew down, neighbors would come and help put it back up again. And that's what I feel like we've really lost, is the community and the connections that we get from interacting with each other in that true, honest way, rather than having the undertone of, I don't need you, I can pay somebody else. 
Uh, so I don't know how long we're at. Sorry if we're over. If someone wants to give me a warning, I'll pass it back to Brent. I'll make this short and sweet. I had a couple of ideas while Matt was talking, uh, especially as far as gifting goes. The gift is you. You are the gift. And the gift is your presence. It's not presence, T-S, it's E-N-C-E. -E. Be here in your life. Be with the people that you are with. Be in conversation. Be caring, be kind, be open, be sincere, be loving, be real. Don't try and be anybody that you're not. You are the gift. The gift came with the package. It is the you that is you. Nobody else can be the you that is you, so get off of your you and be you, okay? <laughs> and we gotta do this together. The community is the gift of us getting together. As these things happen and as more of this is going on all over the planet and all these little spores because there's crazy people that have these ideologies that we could live in an egalitarian society. Ah, it's nuts. <laughs> we can all get along. No way, I don't like that. <laughs> But this is possible, and these, these are the things that make this happen, and this is the giving. You guys came here to give us your time, and in return, we're trying to give you the most knowledge that we have available at this time, so that you can take what we gave you out into the world and keep giving it. These are waves. These, just keep sending it. it doesn't, if you smile at somebody, you don't know what that's going to do to them. You don't know what kind of shockwave that's going to send into their world. Just the littlest things, and that's, that's what it really boils down to. Help a stranger, open a door for somebody. Just do something that's gonna take you an extra two seconds and make their day. Give the gift of your presence everywhere you go and your presence will be received. Thank you. I was going to tell you my story. Uh, so, other than the gifting model business that we're trying to get going and learning tons from, learning lots, um, part of that is giving the appropriate gifts at the appropriate times and not feeling upset if there's no gratitude in response. If you don't generate gratitude in somebody, then it, maybe it was just a misplaced gift. Don't feel bad about it, it's just not going to generate gratitude all the time. But when it really does, that's when you really notice it. So this Christmas, other than some ingredients for baked goods, I didn't purchase anything. And yet I did a little experiment. So I went through my room and everything, it was an experiment in giving and keeping the flow going, but it was also an experiment in letting go of attachments. So I went through my room and I looked at all of the things that were sitting on the shelves that I was not using and the things that I maybe had an attachment to, gifts that people had given me that had sentimental value, and yet I still wasn't using them any longer. I'm trying to think of somebody who would really enjoy the gift and that item that I had. So that's what I ended up doing for Christmas, and it was absolutely fantastic. I got rid of a whole bunch of stuff that I didn't need any longer and really gave some incredible gifts to people, and it was awesome to do so I encourage you guys to try that you don't have to wait for Christmas if you don't want to if you have something on your shelf hey I'm not using this I know someone that is feel free to give it see what happens experiment with it and share your stories so I don't know if anybody thought of a story that they wanted to share maybe we have time for a couple of them quick ones if anybody true gratitude generosity or a loss, and through that loss, found out what real wealth was. No? Okay, it's fine. <laughs> you have one. Josh? I got a story, but it's, uh, it's not about either of those two. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Uh, so basically, I have a friend at work, and she's always like buying disposable cups for coffee. And like, it kinda, kinda bothers me a little bit, so I always give her a hard time. And uh, she just never goes out and buys a disposable cup. 
So, you know, I'm always giving her a hard time, and she said, you know what, it's my birthday on March 3rd. Um, you can buy me a cup for that, right? So I'm like, you know what, like, sounds like a good idea, but there's still like a month of like coffee buying until this time, right? So I'm like, that's, that's a lot of time. So as I was walking home that night, um, I saw like a bottle, like a bottle kind of like this. And I looked at it, I'm like, oh, maybe Kat would want that. But I realized, you know, this isn't actually like a coffee cup. And as much as I would really like to have this water bottle, I don't actually need it. So I took it and I set it on the railing in the light so that whoever lost it could find it. And this morning, I actually went into my cupboard and I took out a coffee mug and I wanted to give it to her, but it wasn't like, it wasn't a good one. You know, like, it was a little bit small. She likes big coffees. I'm like, you know what, like, I'd love to give this to her, but it's not a really good gift. And above and beyond that, it doesn't even have a lid. <laughs> <laughs> so I knew it's not the right gift. I'm like, you know what, like, I really want to give this cup to her. So hopefully, you know, I don't know, we'll figure something out. And I walked to the bus stop this morning and literally sitting on top of the garbage can, no one around, is like a perfect stainless steel coffee mug. And I took that as a message that this cup was meant to her. So the point that I'm trying to make is that when you like have that intention to give to people, gifts will come into your life. And I can't remember who said it, but it might have been Ashley, if she's around here, but kind of the idea that when you receive a gift, it's so that you can give it to someone who actually needs it. That's it. Thank you. And one final piece of motivation that I wanted to give everybody, if you guys are feeling worried or stressed out about potential financial recessions, collapses, whatever you want to call it, gifting not only hastens the collapse of the current economic system, <laughs> it quickens it because it pulls goods out of that system and brings it back into the commons, out of the monetary realm. You're not using money anymore and it lessens the severity of it yeah. because you have people to look out for each other. You have people, you know this guy who grows food, you know this guy who does that. So it hastens it and mitigates the severity. It sounds like a pretty good solution to me. Yeah.